Hello everyone, this is Richard Cespedes, and we're here to play Silent Hill, the arcade. Now I remember Silent Hill back uh, in the early 2000s, I used to play it for PlayStation 2, and uh, you know, it's a real classic game, real fun game. Um, one of the things I like about Silent Hill is the, is the, um, the style of horror that 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 it that that well basically that it is um for game playing for games Silent Hill um was very dynamic and very unique because it had a very um one way to describe Silent Hill was that um it had a very kind of vague kind of dreamlike horror creepiness to it to the way that so right here see how the fog is like knee high that looks so cool but uh, um, like uh, the games had like a vague kind of dreamy kind of a uh, not really um, didn't really make a lot of sense. But that's what I liked about it from the design of the environments to the music. It's it's a lot of creepy eccentricities, you know. Um, it's very different from horror movies and slasher movies, and you can't keep on doing that. You gotta um, innovate. And this game was by far more innovative than a lot of films, even back then. Horror films back then. And the dogs, always those dogs, even in uh, Resident Evil, those damn dogs around there. Always gotta put dogs in these things. Those guys are new. Bill, you look terrible. I'm all right alone. You two, go find Jesse. And that's why I liked about Son of Hill. But this is a game that I really just found out that they um, made. It was 2007. I didn't even know it even existed. Now, most Silent Hill, they start off in this in this like little town. It's foggy as hell. Can't see nothing. That's what makes it very very cool, though. And that's what uh, that's what I'm saying about the Silent Hills. That it's that vague creepiness that makes it intriguing. It's that vague dreamlike uh, horror. You don't know what's going on. It's kind of like very spotty. You know the story is spotty, and you don't know the origins of the monsters. And in a way, I don't want to know because that's what makes me intrigued. That's what causes int int intrigue. Walking right through this. Those weird, see those those bats are just little subtle. They're bats, but they're subtly designed just so that makes it fit this creepy world that is Silent Hill. It works so well. Whoa. Got those guys. Jesse. One thing that I don't like um, about this game is that you're walking with the uh, with that lady and that kid, I guess, and it kind of uh, messes it up because I always like the individual kind of singular alone aspect of what Silent Hill brought to the games. You're always Wait. A character alone, playing alone, you know, and that's what made it more scarier. Silent Hill, I guess you could say, is like a psychological thing, psychological game. Once you really understand it, those characters, those are classic characters too. Those nurses, great design on those nurses. And I'll talk about some other characters that I would say uh, pinpoint exactly what I'm talking about. I think they should pop up pretty soon. I don't know when. But. Ah. A 
Of course, get the shotgun. You gotta have your shotgun. See, I like how the lighting is. The, the characters are bright. They're reflecting the light, like almost glowing. That's a real nice touch. And the grittiness of the walls design makes it very hopelessly ugly, kind of dreadful, you know? Still got 99% of my life. Those disgusting worms. You see, also too, how those worms, you see how those worms kind of get stuck on the screen? I think some more should pop up pretty soon. Not mistaken. Oh, those are creep oh, here we go. We'll just wait till a few of them jump onto the screen. You'll see what I'm talking about. And then everything changes. And see, I just love it. You're in a you're in an apartment complex. I bet. That makes it so much more personal because everyone in America, a lot of people live in apartment complexes like I do. It makes it personal because, like you think to yourself, when I was younger I played the Silent Hill, um, I don't know which one it was, part two, it was PlayStation 2, but it was a, this guy who lived in an apartment complex, and uh, I think it was Homecoming, or I don't know which one it was, I could be wrong, but anyways. He was a public complex. I used to kind of fantasize by myself sometimes and think, imagine if I was like him in a world like that. And most of the gameplay what was that? is like Yay! in that world, is in his apartment complex. It, it, it's around and inside the complex, but it's in his room too. That makes it very personal. Everybody knows Pyramid Head. Kind of slowly creepy walks up to me, creepily. Now, they did an awesome job on this game. They really did. Like, I think that this game is just too good for this medium, for the arcade medium. And it seems kind of like uh, a little cheap to... M like, it doesn't do the history of Silent Hill justice to put it in the arcade. Whoa! You know, because they're kind of, you know, arcades are short. But so far, thus far, graphically and story-wise, um, it's just, the, the look of it, is just, it just pulls you in. Here we go, here we go. See how those bugs jump on there? Like, they look so realistic. I like the way they, the, um, see how, how the, um, the people, the game makers did that. That little detail. Look, just love jumping on you, don't you? Oh, damn. Oh. And woo. That's very, very cool. They did an awesome job on that transition. I don't know what the hell that thing is, blade thing. I'm That's just Silent Hill for you. See, and we're back to the hotel complex. Ooh, that's an ugly, ugly, ugly monster. See the, the designs. So well done, you know. 